In order to show you a simple example of how to use the luminosity information in the RGB channel, I'm going to create an HDR image. And I'm going to use these three different exposures here from this bridge. I've got a plus 2 EV exposure, a 0 EV exposure and a minus 2 EV exposure. So two stops overexposed, the standard exposure and two stops underexposed. Just the standard exposure series that you would use for a normal HDR. But we're not going to feed these images into Photomatix or any other HDR software, but we're going to load them into a layer stack in Photoshop. To do this, I'm going to select these three images, go to the Tools menu in Bridge, and select Photoshop, load files into Photoshop layers. And this opens a new document and the three files that I've selected will be put into my layer stack in the order in which they appeared in, in the in bridge. Now you can see that I've got the exposures here. The overexposed one is the topmost. Then we have the standard exposure with a pretty dark sky here. And then I've got the underexposed one where all the nice details in the lights come out. Now in order to merge or blend these three exposures into an HDR or into an image with a much higher dynamic range than any of the three uh, individual photos, I'm going to make the overexposed one visible. Because the, the channels panel always shows you the channel information for the currently visible image. In that case, the topmost layer here. I'm going to the channels palette. We have our RGB channel and the red, green and blue one. And I'm going to hold down the control key and click on the RGB channel. And that's going to load the selection, as you've learned, of the luminosity information in the overall image. And I'm coming back to the layers panel here. And I'm going to add this selection as a mask. Now I've just clicked on this add new layer mask button here and you see when I disable this mask we've actually hidden the parts that we would like to retain of this layer because this overexposed um, photo here has a very nice deep blue sky but the bridge is actually overexposed. Now, in order to get the blue sky and hide the overexposed parts of the bridge, I'm going to invert this mask. So make sure that you have the mask selected by clicking on it and then uh, push the control I combination on your keyboard. And you can see that immediately the thing turn, turns around. So we've got the nice blue sky and we see much more details in the bridge pillars here than before. Let me just zoom in a bit more here. So if I disable this mask now, you can see we've got overexposed areas. If I enable it again, the exposure of the pillars is much nicer, while the exposure of the sky and the remaining dark parts of the image is retained. So if we look at the mask by holding down the Alt key and clicking on the mask, you can see that We've, we've actually hidden all the overexposed areas, so where the pixels in the overexposed photo were very bright, you have uh, black pixels here in this mask because I've inverted it. And the sky, for example, is almost white, which lets this part of this layer shine through. And you can also see this nice property of self-feathering. So you have a mask here, and you see that all those little details, transitions, gray areas have been copied from the image itself. So we don't need to create a mask for all those little transitions. Um, but this is already given to us by the brightness information of the original image. And let me zoom out again and hide this mask view. And now we've got two additional exposures here. And as it is right now, we've only blended the topmost, the overexposed one, with the standard exposure which already gives us a very nice um, improvement of this image. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to um, work on these little areas here where we still have got overexposed um, regions. You see the top of those pillars, for example, here, or here where the lamps are, is, are still very, very bright and um, overexposed. And in order to cure this, I'm going to turn off 
these two layers here and only leave the underexposed photo visible. And you can see that in this photo we've got all these nice details coming out nicely. With this underexposed photo visible I'm going to the channels uh, panel again and I'm going to do the same thing. Hold down the control key and click on the RGB channel. The selection is loaded and you can see that it's a much smaller selection because we've got less bright pixels in this uh, version of the or in this exposure. I'm going back to the layers panel and I'm doing the same thing. This time in order to avoid the additional step I'm going to hold down the alt key and click on the add layer mask button. And what this does is it creates an inverted mask straight away. Now we don't see any changes because these, mas these uh, layers here are not visible. But if I turn them on you can see that the, the image has changed again. If I turn off this layer here, or this layer mask rather, you see that we've got still um, overexposed areas in these very bright regions here. And if I enable the mask again, you see that these, are these areas of the standard exposure are now hidden and filled in by the underlying um, underexposed photo. Now you've seen that applying the luminosity information as a mask was a straightforward thing. We only needed to select the RGB channel and then invert the mask to hide those bright overexposed areas of the respective layer. Now you can also um, work on these masks and, and refine them even more. For example, in this.